Hello YouTube, today we're going to be continuing with the bug rigging series and today I'm going to be showing you how to do a simple run cycle with this character. Um, picking straight up from where we last left off, so we've got this rig where we've got controllers for the eyes, sort of hands, arms and hands and we've got our legs so this is what we all rigged up previously so we're going to get started on a run cycle first thing i'm going to do is just duplicate this rig and i'm just going to call this cycle i just realized i don't have my key pose on i'll turn this on so you guys can see what buttons I'm pressing. Here we go. Okay. Right. So we're going to open this running cycle composition. I will upload this file when I'm finished. So you will have the cycle that I make now. And I'll keep this one as the rig. So you have the full rig. And you can play around with it as you please. Um, okay. So the first thing I like to do is just make some notes of where we're going to place our our poses for a running cycle I prefer to um, start with the sort of utmost position so I'm just going to write U I feel that's more the one of the most important positions in a run is the when it's at some utmost and then when it falls down you can time all the animation after that so we're going to start building it from the, the highest position and then we'll work our way across um, I'm going to do an 8 frame run cycle so I'm going to come to 8 frames and I'm going to add in the second up so that means 16 frames will be our loop so this should be our work area frame 12 I'm going to put P sorry, for passing position and frame 4 is the other passing position. So I'm going to try and stick to this and see how we get on. Uh, our contact will be either frame 1, 2 or 3. We'll see how it feels but I'll just go straight in the middle for now. So I'll put C for contact. So somewhere around here we will have a sort of lift frame, but we'll see how we get on. And again, maybe turn will be a contact as well. Cool. We we'll use that as a base for now and we'll see how we get on. <clears throat> so I always start any walk cycle, run cycle, or anything I'm doing for character, usually with the hips to establish the ups and downs of the body. Because when you move this it stretches all your handles and you have to constantly adapt everything so I always try to lock down the hip position first if I can obviously you're gonna to have to do tweaks as you go along but that's just how I like to work so let's chuck in a position here oh, yep yeah, let's chuck in a ruler quickly for the floor like so um, this sort of height is actually a good starting point for maybe a contact position so I'm just going to lock this position keyframe here and on the up I'm going to push it pretty high, let's exaggerate this a bit um, I'm just going to quickly show you one of my favorite scripts that I like so these are called tangents which when you move them that's how the motion path works I find them to be quite annoying so if you have this zero tangents if you click one keyframe here I can turn off the out on this one I can turn off the in just gonna control Z both of them or you can select as many keyframes as you want and just click both so now we know when we're in the graph editor that things are just going as we want from a straight up to a down without any left and right movements because I, I prefer to use the speed graph which is this one 
and it kind of affects it differently if those tangents tangents are great don't get me wrong but I like to put them in when I need them because this is a simple up and down I don't need any tangents getting in the way so the passing position will probably get a bit lower that's where the weight is properly absorbed so that makes contact the foot would then absorb the weight and then somewhere around here we'll be popping back up so maybe back to our passing position the contact position sorry so I'm just going to copy that for now and then back to the up which is here so this would be kind of our just going to move that into the middle so we've got like even spacing so far so this would be kind of our rough torso movement and we'll start to move the limbs around this so just going to copy all these frames and complete the loop one thing I like to do because I'm favoring up positions is I like to give them a bit of hang time so I'm just going to select these three keyframes jump into the graph editor and I'm going to click easy ease actually let's simplify this for the time being I'm going to remove all the keyframes bar our ups and our passing positions and we can see if we can get this to work with just using the tangents that I was telling you about earlier right so up positions I'm going to first click hmm. let me demonstrate the difference first currently keyframes by default are I don't know what it's called um, hmm. I prefer to use continuous be Bezier's let me just double check actually uh, keyframe interpolation okay so they're just a standard Bezier keyframe I prefer continuous Bezier and I'll show you why when you're moving these they, the ins and outs here work separately so you can have different easing speed on the in to the out like this and you have this line in between I prefer it to be like kind of smoother motions so if you click this button here converts it to a continuous bezier so when you adjust the easing it influences both side, sides of the graph the in and out and how that looks in the interpolation the interpolation sorry the uh, where is it the velocity is it basically the speed is the same and then you can change the influence which is the easing of the out position or the in position so it's a little bit how this works obviously people could probably explain it way better than what I can but what it means is if this is at zero we will have a stop here during the hang time which I'm never a huge fan of and I prefer to kind of just raise these slightly off the ground so there's always a constant bit of movement which I always feel works a bit more organically so I'm going to do the same for these although it doesn't particularly matter but it might later on when we try and loop it and I'm just going to do a 75 ease for now using motion 2 like so and I'm going to raise all these frames together oh yeah I forgot you get this thing for some reason the last one never raises properly so I'm just going to eyeball that one that will do for now right so we have this kind of hang over the the up position which is quite nice right let's get started on the legs so I'm just gonna not press that button hit P for position rotation while I'm holding shift so we're going to be mainly focusing with these 
And the other thing we might need are these foot roll keyframes. So let's get that on that one. And that on this one. So, because we're in our I probably shouldn't have deleted these contact positions actually. Never mind. Just gonna drop this down to where that leg is kind of like locked straight. Looks so mm, roughly there. Right. So this foot before it lands for the contact, I'm gonna if it lets me remove it, come on, here we go. I'm gonna have it kind of sticking out a bit bent and he's really getting some height on his run. He's about to slam this foot down. And the same for this one. I'm gonna do essentially the opposite. Something like that. Really exaggerated. Maybe that's a bit too high. We can always tweak this afterwards. But let's try that. Contact position. We're going to just slam this down. I forgot to keyframe that, so what I did earlier was a bit pointless. So we're going to zoom in on this floor and make sure we've got this sitting on the floor layer like that. Pass position is important, so we're going to slide this all the way over here. So it's kind of in line with the hip, as if he's. And um, we're just going to make this in line with the floor, so he's got a straight ankle. Like so. I keep pressing Command into the control. Because I'm primarily a Mac user. So that's why that annoying window always pops up. So here, you see how this foot goes under the floor here. It's because of these bloody tangents. So it's going to hit both on that. So our foot should look like it's sliding across the floor better, which is nice. Um, I'm just going to fine-tune the rotation on this frame here. I want it to feel attached to the floor, like so. Let's maybe raise this frame a little bit, bring it more inwards. Because we had a bit of a bent toe there, which means our rig's at fullest stretch, which we don't need. A good way of doing this actually because we've got this position at the right y value we could copy that so I'm just going to copy this position paste it here but then I'm going to slide it all the way across until we get a dead straight leg like so so then that should hit the ground and maybe I don't need this rotation value. Nope, I do. Okay, let's match that up with the floor. Like so. Cool. So now we've got him falling, slamming to the floor, and stretching up. We should probably animate a bit of rotation in this hip, actually. Because that can affect where our feet go. So on the contract contact, the weight would kind of shift forward. Up here, I imagine he'd be bending his back because he's just come onto a spring. This is where we have all these extra bits. We can rotate these a bit further as well to exaggerate stuff, but actually, yeah, uh, let's ignore ignore that. I think I've rigged, I can't remember how I rigged this, it's been a while since I used it because I've been working on other projects. Yeah, no, that works better. Okay, we're good to go, never mind. 
I will come back to the body shapes later on. So we've got this movement. Uh, let's carry on with that. I think that's feeling nice. Slam to the floor, spring up. But except, obviously, here we want this foot to be stretching back as if he's really going for it. Here I'm just going to adjust the position again slightly. Feels a bit too high. We want to have that foot having this this nice kind of bent shape as if it's really lifting off the ground. Like so. Ah. I know what I've done wrong. These hips, I like them to switch positions so let's animate those first as well that's something I usually do animate straight away it's because I've got them shied away uh, let me just find those layers so you're gonna want the these fires so we're gonna unparent and shy that unshy that sorry not unparent it uh, where's the other one here we go Right, for my sanity, I'm just going to color code these. This one is yellow, and this one is blue. Right, so what I like to do with these is we select them both, hit the position key, and then on the next up, this is when this this uh, can't give me words up. This is when this file would be in this file's position and vice versa. So I'm just going to copy the position values of the front file onto the back file and the back file onto the front file. So they've switched over. So now when we're animating these legs will slide in position as well slightly and then we will just complete the loop like so so we have these fires that are slightly moving back and forth we mean may need to exaggerate those a bit further as well but that will do for now so now that will have probably affected everything we've done so far so let's just do some changes let's whoa. select this layer we're going to just move this further underneath that contact position needs to slide over ever so slightly as well like that here we can afford to go a bit further back to really get that foot bending like so and that just feels a bit nicer because if we look at our path now we have this kind of diagonal downwards motion as opposed to straight up we can exaggerate that further as well by bringing this more straight I think that will look better because you'll see this foot coming to plant down as opposed to just going straight down. That's a bit boring. So this will look nicer. And then we can exaggerate this rotation so the foot's really hanging up. And then in this one, we can be cheeky now. And because I like this position here, we can copy that keyframe onto this position, like so. 
and it would be a perfect match because the phi is in the same place as well. So that's basically one leg loop done. There's some weird rotation stuff going on here, which we'll have to come in and correct. Let's quickly. What I'm going to do this position frame here, I'm going to copy this onto this leg's position, like so. Mainly so I can see what's going on here because they had the same position before. But also, this is how I build loops by basically working on one leg and copying it onto the other. It works quite nicely. There we go. So we've kind of got that nice, if we concentrate on this green leg, this nice down movement where it hits the floor, take, absorbs the weight and then springs out. And then we just need to finish the loop. So at this loop here, I'm going to copy these keyframes because I want it to be right back at the start and then we can kind of just focus on the path the the foot hitting the floor and sliding across the floor and springing is the complicated part of the run cycle I find on the passing through leg it's much easier to keyframe and you kind of mainly only need one pose sorted out which will be this kind of middle passing frame somewhere around here Let me drag that foot like so so we've got this nice swooping curve motion and let's just click play and see how that looks feels a bit slow a bit heavy but it might be good for now just while we're focusing on the other leg when we see this leg rigged we can see where the passing position of that leg is and maybe it needs to be more down here but we'll leave that for now so what we're going to do is concentrate on so all of these position frames here essentially are good to be pasted here which will then complete this loop Although the rotations are slightly different on this leg, so we need to sort that out. So this we want to be like that. Let's copy this pass in position here quickly. So we've got this swoop in motion so we can see what's going on with this foot that's right but let's just rotate this one down straight and up and I think we adjusted these keyframes slightly so let's copy this here And then we need to add in that up position as well, which were not the up position, this one. Yeah, so we're copying this keyframe because it's the same pose, just the, the rear facing leg here. So we've got the height right before the, the big leap fits kind of all over the place right now so let's just add in some rotation this place here we want to make sure we're lined up with the floor holding control for smaller values is, makes life easier like so we'll add in one more and 
we should be able to copy this frame to here. Like so. so there we have it. We've got our legs running. And that actually looks quite good when you see them both working together. Yeah, I'm happy with that for now. Let's look at what's going on with this motion path. Not ideal. Hmm. I'm going to select these again. Click 75. Let's see if we can figure out a pattern here. Pass in position. It's looking pretty horrible. What I'm going to actually do select anything that isn't the up position. And I'm just going to convert those to linear. I'm just going to show you a quick example. I think this will mess things up, which is what I kind of wanted to demonstrate earlier. Now, can you see how these tangents, when they're moved, you see how I can't point at my screen. This part here raises with the tangents. This is what I meant earlier about how these can affect the speed graph so I just wanted to you would have seen me just then select everything and click both just to make sure that the values are reading true down here this looks a bit chaotic but the main things I'm focusing on here are these keyframes just want to make sure there's a nice ease this is the best one to look at because Obviously, this part here will attach to this part here, so this will actually print the same chart as this. And let's see how that's playing. I think that's reading okay. We'll leave that for now. I think I'm happy with that. Obviously, it doesn't look very good because we haven't got any body movement or arm movement. So let's focus on that now. Let's do that. I'm going to first start manipulating this lower spine, I think. And the shoulders, which is the neck again. Yeah, and the neck. Let's get some motion here. So on the up position, I think it would be nice if he's leaning back into it. As if his weight is being propelled upwards and his head's so he's got quite a big head so his head's getting dragged back and then when he comes into the contact he'll be like falling into it so his weight will begin to shift forward like that how does that feel falling into it and here the weight will shift further forward ever so slightly right, the weight's being absorbed and readjusted I'm going to copy these frames over here quickly just to see how that feels that's not too bad Probably get away with deleting these. That could work. What we'll do later is like we'll we'll be adding some slight offsets to these when you offset these. These are just linear, but it already brings a bit more life to it. 
particularly when we get that head rotating as well. So let's have a look at that head quickly, which is this one here. I quite like the position there. But here we can really tuck that head in a little bit and bring that back up. Maybe we can exaggerate that a bit more. When we combine this with all these antennas burning and stuff, it, it will look quite quite cool. So here I'm almost going to do the opposite with this tail. I kind of want this to be like curving upwards, like its body's like crushing in on the up. So we've got this the top of the tail, where's the bottom? Here we go. I think the top's parent to this, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to exaggerate that up like that. On here, I'm going to have it like whip down and back up again. Where's that top? So here, I want it to just be like slightly lifting off. Here it's going to slam back hard into it, and we'll have it lift off again. It's already with linear keyframes making this feel a bit more organic and natural. It's looking pretty cool. Right, let's do these arms. Again, we're going to do the position swap to give it a bit of like sensation that he's moving his shoulders back and forth. Uh, so let's just find those. It will be the arms. This one's green. Um, Why can I not see the others? Here we go. And this one's red. Oh, cool. I'm gonna hit P for position, keyframe that. P for position, keyframe that. At the other up position, we're going to copy the positions like we did with the thighs. And we're going to loop it out. see what's going on there but that's just slightly moving back and forth which should give the character more life when we're doing our arm animations which we're going to do now so here I'm just gonna bend this right back here we take the hands out like that this one here, I'm going to do something like that. I'm just going to see what happens if I just copy and paste these across. Worked by the rotation values. So let's see what's going on with that one because the tail's in the way. But we'll be able to see when we start flicking between the character poses. So these aren't working currently. We're probably going to need to drop them all down in general as well. So in these past positions, 
I'm just going to drag this down here. I'm going to have to work like that. Maybe the arm can be inverted as if it's being. Ah, okay, this is the wrong. This one's going forward. I thought it was going backwards. In which case, I'm going to drag this wrist. So I'm going to almost match it up with the curve. And here I'm going to have it flicking out here. So it should have this sense of. I'm going to delete that keyframe because I think it's spinning the wrong way. Okay, now I've rotated that the wrong way. Like this. I think that should feel right. There we go. So you got this kind of sense of the the little like hand part is being dragged out by the the arm where if we nudge these keyframes like this it should feel a bit better as well so we'll get these kind of like flicky wrists that will look cool I don't like these busiers so let's just tailor this a bit That looks cool. Let's copy the first position and rotation frames back over. We'll test the same down position as well, why not? Obviously we've got some crazy overlaps here, so let's just rotate these out. Adjust these Beziers. When it does that, if you hold Alt, you can separate them and control them individually. All right. Let's see how that looks. Like the torso, I'm just going to exaggerate the ease on the the up positions so the pass points are really quick I don't like how this is getting so crunched up here so I'm gonna pull this one down like that Maybe we can exaggerate this a bit more. This is what I mean about how when I animate, it's very back and forth because you need to just constantly see how the pose is reading and it's a lot of like fine adjustments. This is why it's always time consuming. Here the rotation's wrong. I want that one to be flicking this way now as if it's been dragged down so you should start to see that particularly if I nudge these a frame behind which I probably do you should get a sensation of that wrist being dragged it's not coming across yet because the easing is too high so let's just select these ones and I'm going to just do something like 35, see how that reads. It's kind of working. Not as well as I'd like it to. So I think what we'll need to do is just add in some extra keyframes. Same for this one, I think we could benefit from a keyframe sort of like this there we go now we've kind of got this sensation 
So let me zoom out. That, that wrist is really floppy, which I quite like. Cool. <clears throat> Let's just play with this one there. Actually, what I could do Gonna just copy these onto here. Oh, no, because I didn't actually copy them. And then we're gonna copy another pair. So this new loop would be from here. So if we delete all that in front of it, bring that forward so it's inverted. So it's our new loop there with the arms, so we can delete this. Um, it seems like it's working, but the wrists are wrong. So let's find out what's going on here. Actually, I'm just going to delete all the rotation and do this myself. This arm, we obviously can't see what's going on as well, but let's see how that feels. I think that feels quite cool. What's going on with this tail? I haven't looped this tail, that's the issue I'm getting going on here. That's why it's harder to see. Let's copy all these keyframes. I'm not gonna. I could spend ages on this fine tuning it, and I've actually done this animation before, so I'm not gonna waste your time with my preferences. I'm just gonna show you the stages, so I'm gonna move on. I think what I'm gonna do all these keyframes, I'm gonna give them that kind of high 70s easing. kind of working. If I knock this value across on the top, no, it's not working. <laughs> Let's get in there. In general, I think that's coming up a bit too much. And I haven't copied these across, obviously. That's why it felt weird. That's better. Okay, so now maybe I do want to bring that back up. A tiny bit. There we go. So now we got this kind of feeling like that tail's springing up slightly and snapping back during the mid poses. I'm not a fan of how the head's working currently. So let's have a look at that. Uh, again, it's probably because I haven't looped this through. Missing out loads of details here. The main thing you need to take from this is work from the hips, make that jump up and down, do your legs, 
then your arms, and then everything I'm doing now is considered secondary animation, I guess. Yeah, kind of secondary animation. These are the flourishes now that make it feel more organic and more natural. For example, these antenna bends. Once we start. Uh, okay. These are not synced up because I only duplicated the run cycle and not the head. So I'm going to just quickly fix that. So this head run needs to be updated on the expressions. What did I call it firstly? Running cycle. So what we need to do is just quickly change these to say cycle. Um, it's probably a fair amount to quickly update. <laughs> There is a really good, I don't know if I have it on this machine, it's called True Comp Duplicator. It's one of these RD tools, I believe, but I haven't got it installed on this machine because I don't use this machine very often. But what this, what that will do is you can select a composition and you can duplicate it and it will duplicate everything associated with it i.e. pre-comps and it will also update all the expressions which is amazing massive time saver and I should have used it for this but I forgot that it works this way Maybe there isn't that many to do. Maybe we're okay. But I apologize, I should have sorted this out in advance, really. <laughs> okay, yeah, there is a lot to do. If I remember when editing this video, I will fast forward so you don't have to watch me do all this. Right, so I have fixed everything now. Um, that was a major screw up on my behalf. Look into True Comp Duplicator. It is a lifesaver when you're doing stuff like this. Um, yeah, that's some vouchment for it. But I made that mistake into an opportunity and I made a cup of tea. So, cheers, guys. Right, so let's continue. So this is where we were before. We've got this dude running. Um, and now we can do these head turns and stuff. This all works again. I'm not gonna do the any head turns itself, but we will be doing these antenna controls. So let's, let's concentrate on that now. So during the up, I think I want these antennas to be like properly like rotated back and almost bent inverted so something like that and then particularly here this is when they're gonna flop really far forward and bend a lot too it's probably flipping too far forward for the bend. So we get this nice movement in there. Again, I'm just going to copy it across how I have been currently. The beauty of run cycles is they're so quick, you can get away with a lot of, a lot of cheating, like I'm doing right now by copying loads of frames. Uh, let's just quickly see how that looks. That's too aggressive. So I'm going to do something like a 40 or so using. I 
I want a higher ease on these frames, I think. I want to see that detail. That's working a bit better. I'm going to exaggerate these guys. And in general, I'm just going to ease the head a bit less all over. I'm going to go for a 40 everywhere and see how that looks. That feels better. I'm going to exaggerate this spine as well. Let's go for that. This is where you get to have fun and you can just spend time improving your animation. That's a bit nicer. To be honest, I'm pretty happy with that for the sake of the tutorial, so I'm sorry I made you guys wait so long trying to figure out that expression thing. Um, what I'm going to do is my friend Steven, do I have it on here? I don't. I don't use this machine, so... I don't have any of my cool scripts. He has a cool script anyway, it's called Quick Loop, which is really good for quickly chucking on the loop out expression. Which I was gonna quickly just add to some of these things so we could then start to nudge these keyframes, but I have to do it the old fashioned way. So we will type in loop out like that with two O's though. I'm not sure I like this new version of Af I'm on the latest version of After Effects right now and when you write certain things it kind of does this drop out but like here for example I'm used to typing in my own brackets and then it adds on an extra bracket and then I click off and it gives me an expression error don't need that bracket, I've typed it myself might have still got an expression error on that one for some reason oosh, it's because I've got a capital L anyways pet peeve I'm just going to do copy expression only and we're just going to paste it onto. I'm just going to paste it onto everything because I should be able to just select all that. Okay, maybe not. Sorry, this is taking ages as well. I'm very conscious I'm wasting everyone's time right now. <sighs> One thing you can have fun with is as well is it, these are linear at the moment, which mean linear means boring. So Ooh. let's add some ease into these things too. By the way, I spend longer than this when I'm doing run cycles and stuff. This is me trying to do it quick. <laughs> so bear that in mind. This stuff takes a long time to get to look really nice. I haven't actually released this animation yet. It's with my sound designer at the moment. Because um, I've made a, I guess you could say a short film, but not really. I was just doing some experimenting with this character. I will show you in a sec what I came out with. But let's just kind of finish this off. Um, I'm going to just offset some frames and see how they look. Like that feels nicer when there's a bit more delay in this neck area. It's going to feel really good when we, on these bends, if we offset the bend from the rotation, that gives it more of a flick sensation. Um, if we offset these as well from the head, 
then you're getting that really wild flick which actually I think I preferred that version and maybe we'll offset the rotations on the arms to give them that floppy feeling this feels quite stiff to me but you get the idea I think that's probably all I'm going to show you today because I think this is already probably an hour or so as a tutorial that's enough of your guys time and you've got the idea this is how I do everything and this is the part where you'd you spend a bit longer on everything fine tuning it to get it to all to feel really smooth and nice which obviously I don't think it's worth me doing with you guys because you're all capable of having your own preferences what I will do since I haven't released this film I'll give you a sneaky peek um, this is what I did for this character and then that's the run I did, I had him doing some looking back just getting scared by it. I was basically messing around with green screens I, have, I think I've got one which loops for a few times maybe it's this so it's just a continuous loop I drew up some artwork because I was just having fun on a couple of days in between client work and that's my shoe there that you can see but yeah, so this is what I did with this character, made him run continuously from a, a human. As you can see, everything that we've just been kind of covering in that tutorial, I've got that kind of offset with the tail, bouncing up and down, the arms are quite floppy, the antennas are bouncing around, it's got some blinks in there because I showed you how to do all that rigging. Everything that you've seen here you've learned how to rig except this is just another rig from a different pose probably should have started the tutorial showing you this character but hey ho live and learn but yeah I'm hoping to get some sound, nice sound design for this and then I'll put it online and you can admire it way better then because Tom does some really nice sound work and it makes everything I do way better but yeah I guess that would be all for today. I hope it's been useful. Um, obviously run cycles aren't as easy as walk cycles in my opinion, but the more you do them, the better you get. Same with anything. Uh, so I hope this helps get you started on your own run cycles when you get around to doing it. I've been MW Motion. I'll see you guys on the next one.